Unionists like to turn around and ask to be convinced about the viability of an independent Scotland. I don't think it's up to us to convince unionists about the viability of an independent Scotland. I strongly believe that it's up to unionists to put a positive case for Scotland to remain in the union. We're also asked for facts and figures, for numbers, to prove economical cases that we just don't have access to. But when you consider the size of Scotland compared to other small European countries and countries around the world that have less of that benchmark measure called GDP, Scotland is basically hitting the stars above a lot of these countries. And that's under the constraints of the Union. Some would say that's because of the Union that we've got that. And, you know, that's a fair thing to say. However, it's also a fair thing to say that the Union is stopping Scotland reaching its full potential. I've made a video that I'm going to play to you in a second and I'll post it separately here as well that basically outlines the powers that Scotland doesn't have. In fact, let's just watch it just now. I want you to think about something. Can Scotland collect her own gas and oil revenues? Can Scotland set and collect her own national insurance contributions? Can Scotland set and collect her own inheritance tax? Can she produce her own foreign policy? Can she set or change fuel tax? Can she negotiate on such important international issues like Brexit? Can she set, change or collect tobacco duty, corporation tax, alcohol duty or VAT? Can she change the Equality Act? Can Scotland change or set the level of state pension, maternity pay or social security benefits? Can Scotland set the national minimum wage? Does Scotland 100% control her own purse strings and spending? And finally, can Scotland decide to store, station and maintain nuclear weapons less than 20 miles away from her largest city? The answer to every one of these questions is a resounding no. However, if the answer to every one of these questions was yes, we would be a normal, independent nation, thriving on policy made in Scotland by people that know what's best for Scotland. We would be learning from our own mistakes, investing in our own country and voting in governments of our choosing 100% of the time. If you think that it's acceptable that the answer to all these above questions is no, then I hope, I truly hope, that you can accept that you cannot fix stupid. When you consider that all those factors are not in Scotland's control, that we have no say in what goes on, the simple comment that I have to make on that is, what would Scotland be like if we did have control over all those things? Would we be a failure? Would we be a success? Would we be a better, more inspiring nation, a fairer nation, a greener nation, a nation on the world stage that could turn around and be friend to everybody and enemy to none? A nation of diplomacy that had a voice on the world stage that could turn around and voice its opinion directly on such atrocities like the slaughter of innocent civilians in Palestine. All those buttons and levers that we have no control over, every single normal country on the planet does. All those buttons and levers that we have no control over generate revenue and investment into ourselves. And right now, we cannot do that. So, so please don't turn around and tell me that the case for independence isn't viable because we wouldn't be able to do anything. We're a, a first world country that cannot make decisions in the first world for ourselves. 
and if we had the ability to use all those buttons and all those levers that we just mentioned in that previous little video, then yes, we'd be a tremendous success. But right now, we are stifled by a union that's just corrupt and not good for Scotland. Convince me that the union is good for Scotland. Convince me that we should remain in this union. Bet you can't.